So I think I think I'm alive and with a good signal. Wow, it's unbelievable. That happens sometimes even in the US that I have a good signal. So not the last days. So welcome everyone already. It is still 15 minutes before we start. I see already several people are here. Oh, we already a lot of a lot of talking. Hi Robin, hi Mel. Welcome Sarah and of course Tish and Anne. Thank you already Anne for the tip. You tipped me already for the last tour that didn't come through. Hi Lori. Uh, welcome Sarah. Uh, let's see, what do we have more? Oh, it's going up and down again. Let's see if I... Hi Trisha. Hi Beth. Hi Deirdre. Natalie, welcome, natuurlijk. And I have like a little piece only on my screen to see to see the chat. So I uh, cannot see a lot, so only the last names. Uh, <laughs> and hi, Susan. Yeah, I know, I've, I've, I've missed several VIPs, that's true. Very important voyagers, VIFs, I would say them. Not VIPs, but VIFs. Um, and uh, <laughs> so I uh, know everyone, uh, welcome. Uh, welcome uh, back in Miami. I'm in Miami again for, uh, for a special tour about street art. One of the things that, uh, that I love that I really love to, to show. And hi, Marianne, also. And if I didn't name you again, I that's because I have just, I can read just three lines only. And every time if someone is saying something, then automatically um, it is scrolling back to, to, the, to the end. So that's why when I'm trying to, to see everyone, uh, I can only see it right now. So if you, if I did name you, you're of course still very welcome. All of you are VIVs, very important uh, uh, voyagers on uh, on my tours, of course. So, uh, but yeah, welcome already in Wynwood, Wynwood in the heart of Miami. That's where I am right now. I came back to Miami. Um, the interesting thing is, I uh, I just parked my car, and uh, when I started this week, uh, a little over, I think, eight days ago. Yeah, eight days ago on Friday, I, I got a car in the in the, at the end of the afternoon. I started uh, I started driving and hi Linda. Yes, I got out of the traffic. Uh, hi Catherine, of course, also welcome. The several Catherines I think are there. Um, no, but the uh, the interesting thing is when I got my car, I had exactly five thousand miles uh, uh, in the car. So I started this like, oh, it's five thousand. Is that uh, is that uh, is it the wrong number? But no, it is. It was. It was five thousand. So, and I just parked my car over here. It was a little hard to find uh, to find a place, and it was now six thousand and one miles. So I drove these eight days um, a little over a thousand miles through only Florida. I've only seen part of one state. So this country is huge. It's really huge. That is. That's what I. That's what I found out. But it was. Uh, it was amazing already to, to see so many things uh, and uh, to be here as a, just a Dutch guy in a different country. Um, and uh, let's, uh, until, uh, until we officially start the tour, that's uh, in about, I think, 10 minutes from now, let me just tell you a little, uh, the US through my eyes. The U what did I see the last week? What was different from what I'm, uh, what I'm used to? So, uh, and yeah, one of the things are uh, the distances. The, of course, the distances, if you're from Europe, if, even more if you're from the Netherlands, everything is a one hour drive. No, not over here. It is uh, really, really, really big distances. So that's where the thousand miles is coming from. I think if you drive thousand miles from Amsterdam, you'll be in Southern Spain. So uh, that is, uh, <laughs> that's a lot. Hi, Debbie, also welcome. So it is, uh, it's really, uh, it's really uh, big distances, and one of one of the things I've, I've I've seen several things that are so different, and I wanna I wanna tell you uh, I wanna tell you some things uh, about uh, what I, what I, what I experienced over here. And yes, first the first one thing is the roads and the traffic. I mean, I'm used to drive. I'm used to drive, and I've been driving in a lot of countries. Uh, not only not only in the Netherlands, not only in Europe, uh, also in the Philippines, even in India. Uh, in, in several countries, uh, but um, uh, yeah, over here the traffic, the traffic is quite calm, but there are a lot of things 
quite different. One is that this society over here, and that is so different, is a uh, high herbie. Um, um, this society is here really built on cars. And that's not only with the traffic jams where I'm thinking like, take the bicycle, why not? Even more here in the city center, uh, where I had to wait literally 30 minutes uh, to, get a, uh, to, get a, to park my car because it was so extremely busy over here. Everyone was coming here and I thought like, in a bike, I would have been here already and I could have parked just around the corner and high latitude. Um, so that is that's one one of the things, but not only for and that is for me really interesting uh, that almost every location has their own parking spots. If you go to Amsterdam, if you come to the Netherlands, and even most of the other European countries, hi TM, hi Jamie, uh, most of the other European countries they don't have all these parking spots uh, next to almost every restaurant. So that is uh, that's an interesting thing, and then. Um, and yeah, Debbie, not only the seniors are filling the roads, uh, they're not only driving, that's one of the other things, they're not only driving in their cars, I've seen a lot of traffic signs in my life, and if you're coming to the Netherlands, you have a lot of signs, for example, be aware there will be uh, bicycles on the street or on the road or passing, but over here for the first time in my life, and of course I'm in uh, a sunny state, but uh, the first time I've seen traffic signs, like, be careful, there will be golf carts going from one side to the other side. I don't like golf carts, so you see them a lot. I see them a lot, uh, mainly in the, in the, in the smaller, in smaller locations. So, uh, golf carts, that is, that is really a thing over here. A lot of people, of course, are living over here and spending their time on, uh, on the golf course. So, that was, that was one thing. And then the other thing. I've been driving now a lot on, on the highways and when I was coming over here, um, when I was coming over here, I, there was an accident. There was an accident. Uh, I was on the right lane and on one of the left lanes, I think there were five lanes, there was, a, there was an accident. And what happened, or I saw, I saw it happening just out of the, and I was just passing it, like one person in a car came from the right, was passing the car, not left what you're used to, no, passing on the right and the other car was going to the right and they hit each other and ended up on the side. So, and to be honest, in this thousand kilometers, I've really seen several crashed cars. And I was really thinking like, okay, but people are behaving quite well in the traffic. But at the same time, I'm seeing, um, I'm seeing a, lot of, uh, a lot of accidents or uh, places where I thought like, okay, the accident just, just happened before, the police and... and several times also traffic jams because of that and uh, I had a lot of time to think about it while driving and driving and driving and standing in traffic jams and then I thought okay maybe I can advise you one thing for all the Americans that are listening now and maybe uh, uh, some of the governors are also listening right now what if you guys over here in the US are taking over the European system the European system if you have a highway you have just the right lane for the slower traffic and if you are faster than the person in front of you you're passing it at the left always passing it at the left not at the right no only at the left and then if you have a space again you're just going with your car to the right again and uh, that is so much more calmer because i've seen several times that people are just going right and left and through the traffic and yeah of course then you're getting then you're getting accidents because you have to uh, take care of two ways, not only your left side, but also your right side. While in European, uh, in European uh, countries, we see uh, that always people have to stay on the right. I'm not saying that everyone is doing that, but the majority is doing that and it's always going back to the right. So, uh, <laughs> and maybe Tommy, it is the way, but I've not seen it. Maybe done, uh, uh, and I've seen, that's one of the other things, I've seen so much police in comparison. I mean, I'm uh, living in a big city, I'm living in Amsterdam, so you see police, of course. But over here, also on the roads, I've seen so many cars of state patrol, state, sorry, state troopers, uh, sheriffs, uh, other, um, other cars of police, but uh, still, nobody was, uh, everyone was passing me from the right, and not one time or two times, it was the whole time. So I learned, stay in my lane and just uh, don't get uh, uh, <laughs> don't get uh, don't get upset if people are uh, passing you at the right side. So uh, that was one of the things. And of course, traffic I think is saying a lot about uh, about about the country, and that's one of the things 
that I've seen that's so different. And then the other thing is, I said already, uh, parking spots everywhere and also all the drive-ins. I mean, in the Netherlands, we have some drive-ins, uh, the Burger King, the McDonald's, also, also the American companies. But here, there are everywhere drive-ins. So I never had to step out of my car, basically. So, and I'm still not used to that. So I think I got already uh, two extra kilograms in uh, staying, uh, staying a week over here. So that's uh, about, uh, what is it, four pounds, four pounds in one week. So when coming back in the Netherlands, I have to go, uh, I have to train a little more again. So, um, and then another thing, another thing. Okay, I got some extra weight over here, but that's not only, that's not only the car. That's also the portions, the portions. I mean, I knew it. I knew in advance, like the portions will be bigger, but I was still surprised. If I was just ordering some food, I thought like, whoa. This is a lot. While in most uh, European restaurants, when I'm going, then I'm having, uh, then having three rounds. So and over here, I was just doing the main dinner, and <laughs> nothing more, nothing in advance, and also nothing after because it was too much. It was really too much. And then I was thinking, uh, that's maybe also connected. Of course, that made me think. Like I saw several times, people are asking, "Can you have some containers? Can you have a doggy bag?" Uh, and that is also something that we don't have. But I think it's a sign. It's a sign if you have doggy bags that you're doing something wrong because then it means that the portions are a little too big. So uh, that are some things. So please don't feel upset. It is just uh, my things that I'm seeing. And of course, several of these things I knew already. But it is, uh, it is interesting to experience it yourself. And then you're going you're gonna to wonder yourself. And... Uh, so, and I'm, and I'm hoping, and I'm hoping that if you, all of you are traveling, that you are uh, seeing, that you're seeing the same and that you also see like things that are better, some things are worse because there was also things, also one of the things and uh, uh, that's the hospitality. The hospitality in most places is amazing over here. I mean, I would almost send all people working in cafes and restaurants in Europe, not only in the Netherlands, the rest of Europe, they all have to come here to see how you behave to your guests. I had it several times that the owner of the cafe or the restaurant came to me as like, oh, there's a new face in the city. Oh, where are you from? How are you doing? And then not just how are you doing, but really like, okay, where are you from? Why are you here? Uh, that, is, uh, uh, that is really amazing to, to, to see. So I met, I had some really interesting, uh, interesting talks with, uh, with, with, with people. And of course, I know I'm traveling here alone, um, but uh, still, I was surprised uh, with the hospitality. And I, of course, I also know that it is a more tip-based society. That's not what we have in Europe. Uh, so, of course, people are expecting them to, 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 get, a, to get a tip. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it is uh, at, the, at, the same, at the same time, we, I think we Europeans, we are sometimes a little lazy. We're thinking like, okay, yeah. Uh, I'm, get, I'm getting paid, so uh, why should we help someone coming in the restaurant immediately? So I love that hospitality. So I think we can really, really, really learn from that. So that is one, well, that's one of the things. And next to that, Florida is beautiful. Um, Florida is really beautiful. And hi, Adrian. Hi, Linda. Also, um, we welcome people that are, ju that are just joining. I, I will start the tour in about one to two minutes uh, from now. Um, because, of course, we are going here uh, to see some street art, and there's a lot over here. Uh, but I was just thinking I want to share some of the things that I experienced over here, uh, over here in this week. So, uh, yeah, and then, and then the last thing, uh, Florida, it is beautiful. And I can now completely understand all these people from other parts of the U.S. coming over here, sometimes as uh, another new word for me, Sometimes as uh, snowbirds, uh, finding the sun in uh, finding the sun in winter time, uh, but also I mean uh, to live to live over here. So I can I can completely imagine that. And if you wanna, uh, and I've not seen the whole of the U.S., but based on what I've seen over here, it is amazing. And of course, not to forget the wildlife. Um, a lethargy. I don't know. I don't. I cannot. Uh, I think they're nicer than New Yorkers. No, nicer than uh, than than the real Yankees. So. Um, no, but also the wildlife. I love it. I've never seen in my life so many beautiful birds. So everywhere, these huge birds, uh, and not one or two, whole flocks of birds from 
flamingos to uh, all kind of all kind of other animals. Even if I'm now looking up here in Miami, I'm seeing I think a vulture. I think I'm now recognizing it as a vulture that's just above Miami, waiting for me to catch me. Oh, Oscar, stay here. Oscar is also over here, so he has to stay here. So stay next to me because otherwise the vulture will take you, Oscar. So uh, and yeah, what I've seen just in a, in in a short uh, to, to to show you uh, or to tell you a little, I landed a week ago in Miami. I did Miami uh, because of the bad weather. In the end, there was only one day in the Everglades. The plan was to be there uh, two or maybe even three days, but uh, that was uh, that was cancelled before because of the bad weather. So I did one day Everglades, then drove all the way to St. Petersburg. Yeah, the Florida St. Petersburg. Uh, that is a five hour or four and a half to five hour drive almost. Uh, then stayed in St. Petersburg, then made the way via Orlando all the way to the Atlantic coast again. Um, to the to the Atlantic coast. Then of course saw the Kennedy Space Center where I was thinking like, okay, all these rockets and uh, fixing uh, some good reception. That's not rocket science, is it? But uh, it was over there. It was really rocket science because I did. I had a. I had a very bad. Uh, had a very bad reception. Of course, the time. I was so welcome to see. Uh, to see first Tammy and um, she. She was already in Amsterdam, and now I visited over here, and I felt really welcome by her and also her. The most cute dog I've ever seen in my life. The little beanie. I mean. Uh, 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 Tammy, you should take a video of uh, of her when she's jumping, when she's seeing someone that she really likes. She's really jumping, like, I think, uh, two feet high. Like, oh, you, I'm happy to see you. I'm not against you, but next to you. Um, and I've seen also several other uh, several other voyagers. Uh, not everyone, because some of you were not uh, were not were not there, or I didn't have even the time, or it was a little too far away in in, in the end. But also, I was really happy to see. Uh, this morning I was seeing uh, Cindy uh, nearby uh, Vero Beach, uh, and I also was in uh, Junedin, Junedin, Junedin. Okay, the Scottish name for Edinburgh. I uh, I, I learned to see uh, uh, to see Carol <coughs> and also Christine. So uh, thank you to all of them for being. I felt very welcome. I felt very welcome, and that's also nice to know. And uh, and that's then really the last thing I also have to thank not only the people that I was seeing this week, but all of you for helping, for supporting me, because without that, I wouldn't even have been here. Because just to go back uh, three years from now, when I started, when I started first on, on, on Hegel, June uh, Dim, I know, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> June Dim. And it's from Edinburgh, that's, that's, what, I, that's what I learned. Um, so, um, <coughs> Uh, no, the, the 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 thing is, without the support of a lot of you, I would have I wouldn't have been here because at the start of of COVID, um, after a year, I was seriously thinking about giving up uh, being a tour guide, giving up having a company, uh, being uh, organizing tours in Amsterdam and the Netherlands because that was going very bad and there were no tourists at all. So it was sort of okay. Hey, go. Okay, let's see how that goes. Let's see how that goes, if I like that. And then it was for me really a lifesaver. It was for me a lifesaver. So I, in the end, I decided not to go uh, to become a teacher, not to go back to my old job, uh, but to stay and to stay for another year. And it's mainly because of that, uh, of that year, that second year of COVID. So and because of that, I kept on doing, and that's why I'm now here uh, for a conference uh, because my company is now doing very well again after these two years. So thanks again to all of you. I'm really so grateful that uh, also with all your support, I can now uh, I can now see the world, see the world, and even take you uh, into Miami. I'm not from here, as you know already. So okay, let's. Uh, it is I think time to start. So Oscar is with me over here. So Oscar got some new clothes also today from from Cindy, some Florida clothes. Yeah, yeah, for that's for tomorrow. So, uh, but he's still having uh, his uh, clothes today, as you can see. Um, so he's going, uh, he's going in my in my backpack because otherwise I will forget him. I know myself a little. And then it is time. My name is Stefan, by the way. It's time to start a tour. I am in back in Miami in an area that's called Winwood. 
and Wynwood it is a very central uh, central for, uh, central park not so far from, uh, from from downtown and it is um, an old district that was full of warehouses and and yes he's wearing pants yeah um, no it was a district full of warehouses and uh, most of these warehouses after a while they were not in use so much anymore and then uh, about uh, uh, about uh, 20 years ago some first street artists came over here and they were seeing all these huge walls and they were thinking okay with these walls i don't even need a canvas i can just make my own murals like the one over here um that's just that's just behind me it's a very uh it's almost that you think like okay is this street art it's a little different type of street art not the the text not the graffiti kind of uh, kind of things but beautiful modern art made just with spray paint and uh, the coming uh, the coming let's say uh, 45 minutes i'm gonna show you several works i don't know everything from it no not at all we're just gonna enjoy uh, have a have a good time um and just see some uh some, some, to have some inspiration over here um <laughs> and Adrian saying is uh, Catherine not uh, uh, needing a vacation? Yeah, she uh, she does. She does for sure. And um, uh, I'm uh, trying to say that every time to her, take holiday. But she never does. She doesn't want. She doesn't want. So Catherine, it's time for you to take some holiday and a little more than only one day or half a day. So you hear it now, not only from me, but also from the Voyagers. Okay, I'm just going to change this for my face. And I'm showing you one of the first pieces where we're standing in front now beautiful very artistic and uh yeah we're calling in in street art we're calling something a mural at the moment that the whole wall is used so it is almost the old technique that is rediscovered the old technique of the italian artist think about uh, if you go to italy and you have uh, inside the church that uh, a uh, famous, a famous painter did paint completely, completely uh, the uh, the ceiling or sometimes the walls, and uh, the mural is, uh, is 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 coming from that time and is now sort of reinvented by street artists. And this is a very nice one because if you look very well, then you see that there is a very big face in the middle. There's a sort of a monster, but this monster is literally uh, based on. Uh, several uh, is based on several little monsters that we see everywhere and where the big monster is uh, a little creepy I think look at the, the teeth all the little ones are nah, just more uh, more nice some of them have three eyes by the way or even more than three eyes or even six eyes I think there in the corner um, but look, look how beautiful this is. So this is just the first piece of art if you're coming inside over here. And it is, uh, it is good to know that I'm now in an area that's called Windwood Walls. Um, and this is a, a sort of a museum of street art. Uh, but next to it, in this area, almost every wall that you can see is filled with art. So just, for example, look at the big building there at the side or also look at the big pieces over there and if you're driving around or walking around in this neighborhood in this area then you can see that almost every wall is filled with street art so of course there were some street artists that are um, uh, that are uh, that started over here and nowadays uh, most of the fa most famous street artists of the world are coming over here uh, but it's not only in this garden there's not only street art there's also uh, for example this amazing look at this this uh, is from ron english it is a very new work from 2023 or from last year it's only standing here for uh, for about two months and it's like the baby hulk or something like that <laughs> wow look how beautiful this is <laughs> so it is a very strong green baby that we have over here and yes it's a beautiful 
it's a beautiful imagination that this uh, that this man has. And I will later show that he got Oscar later uh, later on, <laughs> earlier earlier. So, and then again, look here on the side. This is uh, <coughs> a little more. It's a different style. And then of course one of the things that we all have to think of always don't forget to dream don't forget to dream and look how beautiful it is with the reflection that we have over here this is from an artist called scott froschauer he's from the us too and he became famous because he is using signs stop signs and all kind of traffic signs uh, for all kind of other texts so uh, in this situation it is dream but he has a whole collection and with all kind of all kind of words so what i love the one dream that is over here on the side and then going to the next one and this is another beautiful one from shepherd fairy it is made in 2022 by the way this whole will uh windwood walls uh, was started in uh, 2009 so there were already several uh, mur murals and an investment company they bought this terrain over here to make it to make it a, a, a piece of art um and not not only that this is this uh investment company they're doing this all over the us so not only over here in miami they're trying to um, to buy pieces in, in cities where it's all a little dingy, where it's not going very well, and then uh, asking artists to make their uh, work. And of course, that also has, uh, that has a good effect because uh, some of these areas like Wynwood over here in Miami became, uh, became very famous because of this. So, um, and look how beautiful this is. Uh, you can maybe recognize some faces. I don't know if one of you is recognizing this face. He is a quite famous artist. A fa quite famous artist. Uh, I'm just uh, doing the, the guessing game. The one at the right, I think all of you will recognize. I met this man, by the way, the one at the right. Uh, but the one at the left, if you don't recognize, this is Keith Haring. And Keith Haring was, of course, the inspiration, uh, the inspiration for a lot of the newer generation of, uh, uh, the newer generation of uh, street artists. And of course, Mandela is at the right. And I think I told this before in uh, one of my tours, I was studying in Leiden. And then one day, uh, Mandela came over there um, and he got, uh, and I was uh, so lucky that I could be from the two, the, the two students of my year at that moment that could give him a hand and saying hi to him. So, uh, and this, yeah, this man over here who lived a big part of his life inside the prison. And even after all the bad things that happened in his life, he was still, was always going for peace. So, what are several other people and over here we have this uh this is uh, amanda Nguyen. i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right and uh she uh she is also uh, at least i knew her already but i think for people from the us she is even more famous because she is really one of the people that are uh really taking their stance against uh or are really uh, important in uh, women uh, in women rights so and she was she became famous by the way because uh during uh, or one of the things she became famous because during covid at first they were saying like uh, this is coming from china so there was a lot of discrimination uh, against uh, chinese people or chinese uh, asian looking people and she started uh, something uh, with this for this uh, and yes, Debbie, I met Mandela, although it was just uh, one minute. I was just giving him a hand and saying hello when I didn't know what to, I didn't know what to say. I was uh, 20 years old. And then over here we have the famous Frida Kahlo next to the uh, next to the the dove that's bringing peace, of course. 
wow but this is a really beautiful piece of art with mainly the inspirations uh, so, uh, so several inspiring people and the future is unwritten and this is what this man uh, this artist wanted to wanted to say with uh, some of the people that inspired him for this uh, for this piece of art so you see Keith Haring, Frida Kahlo, Amanda Nguyen, and Nelson Mandela, and several other ones too. Okay, let's go. Yeah, John Lennon. Yeah, John Lennon was also was also over there. So on the side. <laughs> okay, let's go. And of course, street art. Look what we have over here in the middle. This is quite cool. There is a, a piece of a piece of a metro. This is a, a piece of the Chicago metro that we have over here in the uh, <laughs> so the Chicago a CTA. I think that's Chicago Transport Agency or something like that. I don't know. I've never been there, but I was reading that it's from Chicago in the middle part. And then we have over here a very colorful mural. Really amazing to see this one again, and there's happening so much over here. All these kind of, yeah, or these monsters, it is extremely creative. Extremely creative, very colorful. So uh, I almost, when I'm standing over here, have to uh, start wearing, uh, I have to start wearing my uh, sunglasses. And the interesting thing is that a lot of the murals that are the most colorful are mainly uh, from artists that are coming from uh, South America. So and you've maybe seen sometimes tours of some of my colleagues in, uh, in for example, Brazil, uh, but also in other uh, South American countries that they show how beautiful the street art is over there. So it's quite big. So, and this is from the Brazilian artist Bicicleta Sem Freio. I'm sorry, there's a little sun now over here and we have over here some of the <laughs> from joe urato uh, he uh, he painted uh he painted some superheroes and basically these are the superheroes that are um that are his kids so his kids were one day playing in the garden they were playing in the garden with their superhero uh, uh, clothes and uh, he was uh, he was uh, inspired by that and based on that he painted it uh, thinking about it as like okay the kids are the superheroes of our future so uh, make sure that we uh, raise them that we raise them well and then over here talking about wildlife in Florida now here we have it all these are sort of all the animals that I've seen this week. I, I think I met all of these, from the flamingo <laughs> to some gators. Oh, this is by the way, a very happy gator with a little, uh, a little second gator on top, uh, but also a combination of different, uh, different uh, um, uh, <laughs> birds that you can find over here in, uh, in Florida. And I said already before I was, so it was so cool to see so much, uh, so much amazing wildlife over here in this uh, in this state, and I love this piece of street art. And such a different style again, and that's one of the things that I also love. That almost every uh, almost every artist has another style. And then we're coming over here to something different. This is uh, uh, from a street artist from the United Kingdom uh, named Dan Kitchener. And Dan Kitchener, he is also a photographer. And uh, he, was, he was one moment, um, he was one day in uh, Tokyo. He was in Tokyo, was standing over there. And it was raining, as you can see on this uh, mural. Um, he was uh, st standing over there taking a picture and I was, I was seeing that almost everyone, almost everyone was just doing their thing, walking. And of course it was raining, so everyone was in a hurry. And then there was one girl that was looking at him a little longer. 
So he took a picture and then he made this as a centerpiece of this work that is depicting a sort of a combination between Tokyo and New York that are both of his inspirations. And it is, uh, uh, it is really a beautiful piece of work. It feels a little like uh, going back home to Amsterdam. This is uh, what we have a lot, but it is a beautiful piece of art where in the end, he's using some of the same techniques as, um, as, so if you're looking at this mural over here, then the centerpiece is over here. So everyone, so the rest of the piece is not so important. We're all looking just here at the middle to the car and to the girl who's looking at us. And the rest of his work, you can also see that if I'm going to show the girl, then you see that she is, uh, she can, you can really see her while the rest is just sketches. It is less, uh, less clear. You don't recognize, you don't recognize um, <coughs> their, their, their faces. Um, and only the girl in the middle, she is the middle point. And that's the same technique in the end that was used, for example, by the great Dutch artists like, uh, like, like Rembrandt. So if you look at the work of Rembrandt, you can see some similar, uh, some similar, uh, similar views and always something in the middle part with light uh, looking at you as the centerpiece. So, and yeah, this is a beautiful one, isn't it? Okay, I'm just going a little further and let's go a little inside. Well, there's a little piece of street art over here on the side. So I'm just going inside over here because there are works by another artist that's named Kai. I'm just gonna talk a little less. And uh, he's making uh, a lot of uh, a lot of works for on your walls like yeah, are these paintings no they're not paintings they're looking like paintings but he is uh, um, he is uh, he's using all kinds of other materials and it's very critical very critical about society like this little figure figure over here it's called the, this piece is called the climb someone in love with some more money that's what a lot of people are doing ah and then over here we have another piece we see the same kind of figure again uh, behind a bar behind in almost uh, like in a jail and this work is called consumerism so you can maybe uh, imagine that and the name of the uh, artist is called kai k-a-i and we will see some more of some more of his work. And I personally love some of them that are about war. So over here, a little love, stop a lot of hate. So you see that on the side, there are little signs everywhere. And uh, if there's a red dot, that means that someone bought it already. So almost everything is uh, bought already only this is the one of the last ones that silver so I didn't ask the price but I assume that it is not uh, <laughs> that it is not uh, very cheap but a beautiful uh, beautiful piece and yeah it reminds me a little of Banksy it is in a way it is Banksy and he also has a lot of uh, a lot of smaller ones now you can also see me by the way how I'm all doing this so you also have these little figures and we will see some of them so these are little handcrafted reproductions of some of his bigger works but i want to show you this one i think is the masterpiece so we're seeing several of his uh, of his uh, uh, figures again and they're making the peace symbol even painting it and uh, this one is called piecing it together piecing it together also a beautiful way of uh, using uh, of using words a beautiful sign i think and then i think this is something that we all recognize that on the right side an angel the devil at the left 
and we are torn in between. We always have to struggle between good and right. So it is, uh, I think uh, I can really recognize myself in uh, <laughs> some, of, some of these things, some of the situations in life where you really have an internal struggle. And yeah, this one, I think we all know it. You have uh, a beautiful, you have a flower, and then uh, every time you're picking something for from the flower, is he or she loving me, or is he not loving me? Love me, love me not. Love me, love me not. <laughs> now, it's really beautiful how they have almost uh, almost everything here together. I'm just going to show you two more words and then we're going outside again because there's a lot more but uh, that's a little a little too much so i think this is an important one we have to give the world to our kids so we have to take care better of our world and i think that's a, a beautiful message and then the last one and that's also one of the th things even over here where i am right now i'm seeing a lot of uh you can see a lot of money even more in Miami, but in the end, yeah, what do you buy? What do you buy for all the money you have? In the end, everyone uh, needs some love. So, and uh, money cannot buy love. Although this one over here is called The Thinker, named after the famous work of, uh, or the, uh, the, French, the French artist. And uh, The Thinker over here, sitting on a lot of money, but thinking about love in the end. Okay, there's a lot more, but yeah, and peace is what the world needs, and that's uh, that's and again, this just also showing you the piecing it together. It is uh, I can just going uh, going around it, so you can see that they are really working on it on the side, piecing the pieces, making sure yeah, there's some repairs that are needed and even the little man here in front of us and yeah sorry it was of course Rodin I think I didn't even say that but the thinker from Auguste Rodin that you can find in Paris I'm far away from Paris right now okay let's go outside again and just if you missed the name of this artist over here perfect memories new words by Kai K-A-I okay Going outside, and then here there are several other works. This is a more, as someone was saying, talking about Blade Runner. This is more the future that we have over here in front of us from uh, Drick, not Dirk, but Drick the villain. He is a German. Uh, he's a German artist that presented this work over here. But the one that I really like to show you is the one over here. This is again, a very colorful one. And look at the details again, so colorful. And uh, it's depicting two men that are having, that are having a fight on their horses. And it is a, a little more Eastern style because it is from a, a Japanese artist, and this Japanese artist is called Tomokazu Matsuyama. <laughs> Tomo, Tomokazu Matsuyama, that is the name of the artist. So, <laughs> and yes, Tariq, uh, that's uh, you're right, uh, it's a little Tom Otterness like figures. And then uh, I'm showing you something, and this one I was recognizing immediately because I can even show you some Amsterdam artists some Amsterdam artists because over here we have a beautiful work of some Amsterdamers who are calling themselves the London police because they are uh, originally expats that came to Amsterdam started with their works doing over there and in Amsterdam we have several locations where you can find their work and it is very recognizable all these little uh, smiley men with most of the time numbers on their uh, on their clothes so this is 
the London police and uh, it is amazing to see some work of them so far away from Amsterdam. <laughs> and it's huge again, it's so huge. And that's of course the, the nice thing of uh, having this in a museum is that nobody is painting over. And normally with street art, there's always the chance, and that's what I've seen more in Amsterdam on the walls outside, there's always a chance that, uh, that someone else is taking it over. So, now look at the one over here. So, <laughs> as someone took a, took a picture in the hospital from a street artist, then it is looking like this. <laughs> if you're doing an x-ray <laughs> of the artist, then it is, uh, it is beautiful. And Laura, yeah, it is also a little Tom Otterness. And, and of course, I can imagine why you're thinking that because of the, uh, the, round, the round faces. And also what we were seeing before, the work of Kai has a little the same feeling. Of course, a lot of these artists are inspired by each other. Working with different materials, working with different colors, different styles. But, uh, and yeah, look at this. This is also a little giving the feeling from where I am right now. And again, the work there at the end that you see on the, uh, on the building, that's just outside. So, and you have so many walls in this area. I can take you around for, uh, for hours and hours because there's so much to see over here. So, and then we have Buff Monster, also a famous, uh, <laughs> A famous street artist so I think I've also seen some work of him in Amsterdam before but yeah you see that nowadays that some of these street artists are asked by uh, uh, by brands all over the world but of course most of them started just on the streets and then we have over here another work it is a completely different style beautiful faces several faces together uh, from Mojo, the artist named Mojo. And in a lot of situations, and then I'm gonna show you the next piece, in a lot of situations you can, based on what is depicted, you can already think a little about, okay, uh, where is this artist from? So this is feeling a little more Eastern, and uh, yes, this is an, uh, from an artist from Japan again, named Aiko. We can see it also in his name. In this situation, he has a very um, easy to recognize his, uh, his name. That's, n by the way, not with all artists the case. So some of them, uh, you really have to search for if they have a tag somewhere. If they have a tag somewhere uh, to see their name. And here we have another really uh, interesting work from Lelin Alves. He is also from Brazil. So what you see in the world of street art that a lot of street artists are coming from uh, from South America, uh, where you have a lot of uh, canvases uh, and where it is really something also from the uh, from the streets. And then look at this one. I love these combinations of. Uh, different pieces so you have the eyes in the middle but if you're looking better then you can see that there are some uh, there's some different artworks on the on the sides beautiful piece again and then we have some more duchies because over here we have the work and you see uh, i'm not the only dutch person who loves his teddy bear. And uh, <laughs> this is from uh, Leon Keer. Uh, he made this, he painted this also uh, last year. And the nice, <coughs> now, the, the, nice thing, the nice thing is that this is partly uh, painted on the street. So look at this. So only from a, uh, for, from, uh, from a distance you can see it better, but if I'm going to the sides then you can see something interesting happens because he painted on the street. 
And Susan, who decided there's an organization over here and uh, they are taking care and they are deciding who will be the next artists. And uh, they are doing a mix. They're doing a mix of uh, some of them are uh, quite famous in their countries or sometimes even worldwide, while other ones are just new and have a different style. Um, so, uh, yeah, it is a little like, uh, like in a museum. Like in a museum, the curator is deciding who can be uh, who can be uh, uh, presented, and the same is over here. So they're asking, uh, they're asking artists based on uh, if they are famous or not, or if they have a different style. And look at this one over here, just going a little more nearby. Yeah. This is from Farid Rueda from Mexico. He's coming over nearby, and you can have these beautiful eyes again. Wow, this is amazing, isn't it? Okay, just going to the next one. There is so much to see over here, so I don't even have time, I think, to show to show everything. But here we have Lauren Ice, and uh, this is uh, showing the uh, variety of the society that we have nowadays with different very colorful, very colorful people sitting next to each other, kissing each other. So, of course, again, uh, showing that it doesn't matter how you're looking, who you're loving, uh, everyone uh, should, uh, should uh, if everyone is welcome, everyone should be, even the gator is welcome. <laughs> That's a beautiful, uh, a beautiful piece again. And to show you again, like I'm just here on the corner and then going in the next street. So the next street, you see that almost everywhere on the old warehouses, there is street art. So this whole area over here is filled with street art. So I could have done even just a tour, not inside the museum, but just outside. The only thing is then you have to walk some bigger distances. So we have over here, it's a little harder to see with the sun right now. But we also have over here on the street, this is one of these uh, uh, pieces of art where you have to stand on a certain location to see what it depicts. So we're now going slowly to that location. I'm just, there are some footsteps over here. And now look at this, the magic is happening. So now we see what it is. There's like a big reset button over here so you can jump on it but and then immediately if you have another <laughs> location then you see the perspective is changing immediately and it is completely different so wow <laughs> so i'm just going to show now someone is stepping is, is stepping is stepping or maybe jumping he should he should jump he should jump Yeah, <laughs> that's what you have to do. Play it on the reset button. And then over here in this area, you can do all kinds of interesting tours. I don't have the time uh, to do that, but you can, for example, over here going in this, what is called the lady buggy, the lady buck machine. So the lady buggies. Look how beautiful this is. So your tour guide is then sitting over here and then people can sit on the side playing some music. <laughs> and Catherine, of course, the gator. Okay, and then I'm going to show you something. Maybe I've also shown this before. So last year I was in Lisbon um, and then I, did a, then I did a tour from one of my favorite artists. And uh, he is also, he has work over here. And you're maybe recognizing it from his uh, uh, exhibition that I showed over there in Lisbon. Uh, of course, the man is called Bordalo II, Bordalo II. And uh, he became quite famous because of the art that he is making uh, just all from uh, things that we are throwing away. So. For example, these two monkeys over here, these huge monkeys, 
if you're coming a little more nearby, then you can see that he just used all kinds of stuff that he found, plastic pieces that he found on the streets. And uh, from all of that, so there's even a little, look at his nose where I come from. So based on what he found on the streets, he made these huge pieces like the ones over here. And, uh, and the eyes over here are made from helmets. So two helmets that he found on the streets for, uh, for the eyes, for example. And if you look very carefully, you can find all kinds of pieces from uh, plastic pieces, even pieces from cars uh, that he used for, uh, uh, for this piece of art. Okay, I'm just going. Bordalo the seconds. Okay, just going to the next part. I hope you're still enjoying what I'm showing you. It's a little different tour, of course. There's so much to show, so much to see. And then we have a piece from uh, a street artist from Chile, Basic Fernandez. And I know that my colleague in Chile is also sometimes showing the beautiful street art that you can find over there. And I'm sometimes a little jealous if I'm seeing what, uh, um, <coughs> what, uh, what, 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 what she is showing. So, uh, but over here, the work of Basic Fernandez from Chile, painted in 2019. So really also a beautiful piece of work. A lot of people are taking pictures, of course, but also this one I really love. Completely different style again. It's a sort of, uh, what is it, splash paint, maybe? I'm thinking that he was standing over here just throwing, just throwing his paint against the walls. <laughs> or that's how it looks. Most probably it was not working like that. <laughs> But really, really, really beautiful. Yeah, and I hope, oh, thank you, thank you for the for the comments. And also, again, look at the building over here on the side. So the big building, you see that everywhere, every blind wall, they are using again. Uh, they're using again for uh, uh, for street art. So. It's making it so colorful. And of course, this whole area, at first there were just one or two street artists who started and bit by bit, it became the area in Miami uh, where street artists from all over the world were coming to paint. And uh, even owners of buildings are nowadays asking street artists to, uh, to, make, uh, uh, to make their buildings more colorful. And then we have over here, again, a completely different style from Vils, he's by the way also from Port from Portugal. So a colleague of uh, Bordalo too, with a completely different style. So, uh, and if you coming more nearby, you can see it a little better that uh, he just used concrete. He just used concrete and uh, got pieces out of the pieces out of the wall. Wow. This is amazing. So, and so, and yeah, if, you, if, you're, if you're coming nearby, it is a little like uh, you, what you see in a newspaper. So from nearby, it's just little dots or little scratches in the wall. And you really have to go further away to see that in this case, these scratches are just the wrinkles around, uh, around the, uh, the mouth of this uh, this lady. Okay, just going back a little. Okay. Look at this. And of course, if you like to uh, support me, thank you, Catherine, for uh, uh, for uh, uh, for sharing. You can do that by uh, buying me a coffee or uh, or via PayPal. So. 
and I'm very grateful for everyone. So I can keep on uh, keep on doing these types of tours because there are so much more in the world that I want to show you. But look at this. Also really love this. So creative again. I would not want to have this on my wall in my house. That's maybe a little too much, but it is uh, really making it so colorful over over here again. All these little, uh, yeah, are these monsters again or just, <laughs> and by the way, this is the work of Greg Mike. Greg Mike, you can see his name in the corner. So his tech is also easy to recognize. And then uh, we have more, we have more. So I'm just showing you around a little. This is a beautiful day. And I was showing you already at the start, uh, the work of Scott Froschauer. And here we have some other traffic signs. Be the change, stop, be the change. That's a, that's a beautiful one. I've seen a lot of these traffic signs. I've been stopping a lot with my car <laughs> in the last days, but yeah, be the change. I think uh, that fits uh, that fits really well with also what I'm trying to do with some of uh, with some of my tours. We can all be the change. Start small, uh, and I think it's uh, beautiful how he depicted this on these street signs over here. And then you were maybe seeing it already. There is more work of Kai. So we saw. Uh, a different variation um, but over here we have a bigger variation of giving the world giving the world to our kids wow this is really beautiful isn't it <laughs> now we're almost at the end of this part that is uh, that is inside so but I can show you some more insight again. Okay, I think I'm back. I think I'm back. I'm reconnected. Maybe it was not the best idea to go inside. So uh, I saw it immediately that it turned red. So uh, I think that the building is uh, too heavy if there is sometimes if you go inside uh, or if you visit, uh, if it's, it's the <laughs> Kennedy Space Center you have that so I'm gonna stay uh, I'm gonna stay outside and look how beautiful the weather is here again this is why it is uh, the sunshine state isn't it <laughs> not what I had before but before I'm going out I'm gonna show you some other pieces so one moment I also really love this This is from a guy called Deaver from the US again. And he's just using uh, letters or a little uh, different letters from, or, or signs from different, uh, different parts of the world. And just by using it all together, it is uh, making another piece of art. I really love this. So this is something that I can have on my wall. So I maybe have to call him to see when he is in Amsterdam if he can uh, uh, paint this on my wall. So maybe one day. <laughs> okay, I will go. Uh, I will go outside. So we're going outside of the Windwood walls. Okay, let's go outside. Thank you, guys. Okay, and then I'm. Um, over here and again just look at the uh, the buildings around here almost everywhere you see or street art or at least inspired by the street art so i'm just uh, it, it doesn't even matter which way i'm going but let's uh, walk a little it is quite busy over here of course it is a saturday there are street markets there are also a lot of bars and restaurants and uh, little art shops for example um, so it is a really creative area. So the urban feeling I really have, uh, I really have over here. So, 
and welcome people are just that are just joining i'm still in miami in the winwood area oh we missed the winwood wall shop but yeah i cannot bring a lot so i said already there are that's a saturday so there's a little street market over here where you have a lot more artists where you can have drinks and food all the healthy food you can think of you can buy over here so i think if uh, i was going here a little before the portions are smaller so you don't need you don't need a, a, a doggy bag over here a lot of the people you see over here are really into healthy food healthy eating and Ashrit, if it's only three hours away from where we're living, ah, it is an amazing place over here. It's so different again from other parts of the US I've seen, but I'm feeling inspired. Just only look around how colorful everything is, uh, how busy people are, and I'm just gonna, okay. And if you wanna party, this is the beer bike. Uh, but then uh, they don't even have to pedal. But I also want to show you, and I saw a guy who was making this before. So it's just a pole, electricity pole over here, full of faces. So <laughs> different faces on all the sides. It's a little like a modern totem pole that is made over here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and for example, over here at the other side, frozen margaritas you can get over there. I mean, only the mural already is making sure that you like to go over there. And then also over here, almost every blind wall you can find is filled, is filled with street art. Uh, look, by the way, at the face over there on the side, uh, a McDonald's back upside down, <laughs> drinking uh, his milkshake or his Coke or something like that. So it's really amazing to see all of these and also, hey! And there are more totem poles. Look at this, look at this. Wow, and this is just outside. Yes, I'm not inside the Winwood Walls place anymore. This is, this is just outside. And earlier when I was here, I saw the guy who was making this. So, and even on the, on the streets, even on the streets, you're seeing that there is a graffiti, that there are all kinds of works. So uh you need eyes you need more than two eyes when you are walking around here because there is street art everywhere okay oh look at this the man over here he is uh, he is making it so he just made the ones over here i'm just gonna look at the other side so it is still it is still fresh placed the the the, 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 the next the, the next totem pole that's michael okay over here we have the artist he's just getting some drinks i think some le oh lemonade oh there's no alcohol inside <laughs> but he is making these beautiful pieces of art here on the side <laughs> oh look at that look at that i mean even <laughs> love is a, love is everywhere enjoy your drinks enjoy your drinks <laughs> i will do i will come back later <laughs> and also i love the vibe here on the streets when you see people from all colors from all over the world so it is one of these uh, one of these areas if i would have been for a week in uh, 
Miami, I would have gone here already earlier. So, but I'm seeing at the same time, oh, look at this. The sun is setting. It also means that I'm almost having to end this tour because I have to, uh, I have to get my car. Parking over here is quite expensive. So, but I have to get my car, drive it back to, drive it back to the airport uh because i'm uh, uh now my second part of this trip will be when i'm going on a cruise and that will start tomorrow so i'm gonna bring back my car and just uh using taxis and uh, of course a ship from uh, tomorrow on so i don't need uh, my car anymore oh i want to leave over here i don't want to leave i don't want to leave and i think if i'm seeing all of this i have to go back so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you my face for a last moment. So I hope you uh, I hope you enjoyed it uh, today to see a little different type of tour, to hear something about uh, about what I found in the U.S. What I love about it now this is one of the things that I love next to the the wildlife, the weather, the very welcoming people uh, almost everywhere, like what we just saw on the street, and uh, you can uh, you can find that uh, you can find that everywhere. So, uh, so I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for all your support. What I was saying before, well, I don't know this guy over here, but uh, <laughs> it is amazing uh, to see so so many things over here. Um, no, but I really want to thank you all for your support for in this whole week in the U.S. I know that not all tours uh, did happen because of traffic and mainly because of uh, bad weather and uh, no reception. So things that I could not control. So uh, reception, I normally don't have problems with that in Europe, but over here, it's another part of the world. So there's more wilderness. So uh, no, but I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna have one drink, then taking my car back to the airport, going to my hotel in the neighboring city of Fort Lauderdale. Uh, and from there tomorrow, I will take you on a cruise. And just uh, keep an eye on my channel because there will be several tours be added in the in the coming days so what i'm gonna try to do in all the three locations where i'm going to that means um uh mexico i will go to mexico to do a tour over there on cozumel or maybe tulum depends a little how easy to come uh, to come over there uh i will be on the cayman islands so also doing a tour over there and then the last one what was the last one there are so many beautiful islands there in the Caribbean. Uh, Catherine, help me. <laughs> so, so uh, no, but uh, okay. So keep an eye on my uh, on, 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 keep an eye on my channel, and uh, there will be there will be added. Oh, be mini, yeah, be mini, be mini. That is uh, that is the last one. So uh, now keep an eye on my channel. There will be updates in the in the coming days from new tours. Uh, and of course, also when I'm in, back in Amsterdam, I'm going to show you maybe also over there a little more street art because uh, I think a lot of you really did enjoy this. So, and I can also show you Amsterdam and there's also the area where I know a little more about the artists and uh, the things they're depicting. So thank you again. Um, and uh, no, I will not forget, uh, I will not forget Oscar. He is in my bag over here. So, uh, and he loves radar too. So thank you again for joining. And I hope to see you again on one of my tours in the coming days. Uh, but I, uh, I had a wonderful time already over here. So the USA, I will be back for sure. Thank you. Bye-bye.